Hi everyone, here I am in the beautiful Aosta Valley in Italy. I'm just going to do uh, a lesson for you now. I talked about uh, earlier in September, I mentioned that this month, October, would be the reimagining your reference material month. And I just want to talk about some of the things you could do when you have a reference material or an idea that you really like, but it's not quite right. You haven't taken a great photo, it's not the right day, whatever. So today I'm just going to start with one for this lesson on um, how to combine a couple of photos, how to, to work out how you might uh, recreate the reference material into a painting that you would like to do. I'll put some little shots up here, or here, <laughs> depending how it goes when I edit, to show you uh, some of the ways I've done it, but I'll sh also show you on the little screen here. I'm not sure how that will come out. So what am I going to use today? Well, I have some my go-to paper in Australia, which is the Colour Fix Original. Uh, it's called the Rainbow Pack, this one, because it has all the 24 colours in it. So it's a, a great pack, very cheap. I think the paper works out about $2 a sheet. And it's, uh, I get this for my class. So I'll be using today the Raw Sienna, which is this colour here. I'm using that because I'm, I'm going to be doing um, a mountain chalet, a farm, farm chalet and it's got a lot of woody colors in it but also there's a lot of green grass in the background so I want to have a compliment for the green glass grass so that's the paper I'm using I'm just using my travel kit I've put together so you can see there are quite a lot of pastel colors there maybe about 90 120 which I've broken into small pieces and put in it in this box which is all uh, lined uh, with little foam uh, insert. So they don't move around at all when I travel and the dust doesn't get anywhere. It's a great little box to take away with me. Uh, you can buy those boxes from, I think I probably got this from Dick, uh, from Jerry's Art, Art and Armor online, but most pastel box, most online stores that sell pastels will sell empty boxes which are great. I've got a few of these and at one stage I had all my different colours in them but now I use a different system but they're great for travel. I have my uh, Samsung tablet here which I'm going to have the photos on. I think you'll see them better when I put them up in the corner here so that's what I'm going to do with that. Um, but I'll have it there so I can paint from because I'm away on holiday and I don't have uh, a printer to print out any of the images for me. I'm not doing this one plain air, well I'm outside in the plain air, <laughs> but I'm going to do it from the photos because I'm combining things and I didn't have time to do it when I was back in um, Adelboden, actually in Bowden, near Adelboden, a, a couple of days ago. But I took all the photos at the day we were leaving and I wanted to do a painting but didn't have time because we had to go. So now I'm going to do it for you. You're just going to see a little insert video now that I did to show you how uh, what I've changed. Here I have a photo which I've opened up in um, photos and I loved this building, absolutely loved it, but it's not going to make a great painting. What I wanted to do first was to take out some of the objects, so I'll just show you the ones I want to take out. I, I just go into draw, choose uh, colour, this time I'm going to use red because I want to take it out. I want to take that out, I don't really want that in there and I don't want this hay bale wrapped in plastic. Oh, I hate hay bales wrapped in plastic. I'm also going to get rid of the road, so all this road is going to go here. And then I'm just going to save it and, and park it away over here in this uh, folder that I've got for this particular painting. I like this building uh, and I love the cows. I want to add the cows to my other building and I want it to be in this sort of slope, but not in this particular format. So I'm going to just try a little bit of cropping there. I'll go into edit and crop. And I'm just going to pull it in a little bit tighter to see what format I might like. And you can see this is so much quicker than doing thumbnails. So make use of your computer if you if you um, have that facility. So now I've tightened into the building, which I'm going to replace with my first one. I want to use these cows and I want that slope. Okay, back from that video. And now what I'm going to do is start the painting. So I explained to you on that video that what I wanted was that particular little chalet 
I like the little wood patterns in it, the stacked wood, which are everywhere in Switzerland. I just love those patterns. So I wanted that little chalet, but I wanted it in the setting of the other one. I also wanted some cows in the background because just the memory of all those little cowbells is fantastic. Uh, so I did a bit of cropping. I decided what to remove from the, the little work, the little barn, and now I'm going to get on with the painting. I'll just zoom in so you can see what I'm doing as I'm going. I'll just be working on here for you. I'm, I'm leaving a little gap over here, no, over here, so I can put in some images if I want to as I go. So just ignore that space uh, and we'll get on. I might actually sketch up a few things in pencil today simply because, as I said earlier, I forgot to bring, you always forget something when you're packing, and I forgot to bring the um, contact pastels with me. Now going to, to just crop in the, uh, the major lines. I might not use the pencil for the major lines because it's going to go in green, some of this. What I want is to have a little line of the paddock coming through there. And there's going to be another little line, a little bit lower down, which is a cow track. Uh, and then this is going to be where the little barn is sitting there. So this paddock's coming down like so, and I'm just putting in some of those directional lines to tell me how the paddock's going. So green, although it's been a bit of a droughty summer here. They haven't had as much rain as they would have liked, and I've seen irrigation, which I've never seen before in Switzerland. So that's just to tell me that's where the grass is going, and it's going in some nice little lines across here. And you'll see a little pattern in this it's where they've mowed across there so it'll be a little pattern. So that's the main shape of the direction of the hill and paddock across there. In the original photo and the original barn was um, down the in the valley with a road on there. I didn't want the road, I thought it was cutting it in so I just wanted to have this. There's going to be a few cows dotting around here too um, so I might just take very similar to the background, just to give me the idea of where the cows are going. I'm just going to put a few marks there to start me off. So these don't even have to look anything like cows, it's just an idea of where I'm going to put the cows later on. And we're going to, we're going to go across this road here. They're all gathered around there. There must be a drink, a drinking station there. There, just to give me a little bit of interest in the background and, and help me place it firmly in cow country in Switzerland. Now I'm going to work on the barn itself. So when you're reimagining it, just decide what elements you want to keep in, what elements you want to keep out. And here I chose to keep out the plastic wrapped hay bales because I hate plastic wrapped hay bales. I'm sure they're good for the farmers but they're not good for an artist. And also to keep leave out the silos, I didn't want them either. So back to the painting. Now I have to put in the lines of the um, house and I'm actually going to do those with the pencil and I'm going to use another pencil just to give me the edges I want so I'll just draw this in where I want it and I wanted it over here so it's offset a bit from the cows and here I'm looking at my angles on my angles on my tablet I'm just using the pencil to replicate those angles so I get the roof right Right, so one line going there and then transfer it there. It's a very easy way, so you don't put your bumpy finger in the way. It's a very easy way to get the roof line in correctly or angles for anything just by taking your pencil, lining it up with whatever object it happens to be um, in the distance or on a sketch and then transferring that angle there. Really quick and rapid and you don't have to worry too much about it. And by doing the same thing I can see that this side is slightly lower than that and I've got that on this reference. So just drawing a couple of lines there. That's going to be the roof. It has a little chimney here. So I'm going to pop in a little chimney down here. And because I'm reimagining it, I can do whatever I like with it. 
Uh, and that's the good thing about you taking charge of the scene rather than the scene taking charge of you and, and dictating to you how you should do it. When I get home, I have a reference that someone sent me to do a painting on a boat for a husband for his birthday. And it was a terribly dark and overcast day. And she didn't really like that. And I said, well, I can just sum it up for you. So you don't have to stick with the weather you've got or the actual uh, subject. You can take things out. So I don't want my silos in there. They're going. But I do want uh, the rest of the barn to go in as is. So I'm just drawing a couple of straightish lines to guide me there. Opening the barn. And a very big opening. I guess that's to cope with the snow. Okay, so they're the major roof line. I've got the angle of that line. Maybe it should be slightly high there uh, in proportion to the rest. So what I'm going to do to fix that is very easy. I'm just going to run the grass across a little bit higher. There's some deep shadow under there, which I'll be putting in later, but right now I'm just going to put in the main elements of the barn. So there's a door there, a door there. The wind is blowing, I'm hoping that's not interfering with the soundtrack for you. Uh, over here, a lot of this is in shadow, but out the front there's a, a nice area that's quite light and that's going to be the some boards going down. This will all need a little bit of extra work once I get going and I'll probably put some more of that work in, in pencil simply because, as I said I didn't have my contours with me. There's another door up here and I'm just checking my angles there and that door starts at around about there. There and another small door. And there's a ladder going up there. And there'll be another ladder going up here. I'll have to redo those ladders, but they're just guides for me to start the whole thing off. All this is in deep shadow, so I'm not putting any details about it at all now. Barn. In here there's a whole lot of wood. There's some I'm going to put all this, make this whole area in here. We want it some more like so. So that's just a reminder that's what we're going in there. Around here you can just see uh, some, some signs of family life around there because this is the side where some flowers and so on so I'm just putting some of those reminders in there but that's family life there and there I have it the barns in the cow shapes are in and the directional shapes of the paddock so now I just need to start working on making it believable in my original again this is something I've changed there's a big tree in the background and I'm not going to put it in here because I changes the dynamics too, too much. So I'm actually not going to put any trees. It's just going to be the meadows, the cows and the barn. I'm, I maybe should have made that barn a bit bigger, but I think it will be fine. So now what I'm going to do is um, start putting in the greenery a bit more and I'm going to then go back to my other reference because I want to have the paddock shape the way it is in here in my second reference. So combining those references, reimagining the whole thing. Down in here there's a bit of shadow and what I'm going to use for that are some some purpley bluey colours just to get in a bit of shadow down here. And I'll add in some dark greens as well. It's just giving me a little bit of shadow down in here. Running it across into that, that paint there. I'm going to put a little shadow line under that, that cow track there and maybe a little shadow line coming down there. The 
whole uh, house barn is in quite deep shadow there. So I'm going to start off by putting in some of that shadow. I'm just using a purple. I'll add in some more colours. I just wanted to use a purple to start with. I'm establishing here the shadows. So there we go. That's the shadowed area of the barn. It will get uh, some really deeper shadows going in as well. And I'm going to use that to put in. So when you're reimagining it, it's important to go with uh, one set of shadows. So I'm now looking at my other barn and I'm putting in shadows that I see on that because it fits in with the landscape around it. If I use my other reference, my first barn that I really love, and use that for the shadows, they're not going to fit here. So that's something you really need to be aware of, where the shadows are coming from. And when you're combining photos, please uh, just choose one photo and, and then use that photo to work out where your shadows is, where the source of light is. And don't keep switching between them or you will end up with a funny looking painting. So here I'm just putting in the shadows. I've just overreached it there. And I need to go and get my uh, little brush out of my box so I can brush a bit of that out of the way. Just take that little one and brush that off. That's better. I'll keep that out just for brushing off anything else I need to. Put the rest of the back away. Wind here out here, as I said before. So I'm, I'm starting to establish the shadows. I'm really going to put a little bit extra dark shadow down there too. And I'm using the very sharp edge. And I'm sure I've said that to you before. Using the sharp edges of square pastels is absolutely great for getting in those sharp edges. of direction that you didn't intend. So if the hill is coming down and going around, just use your hand to move it and you'll end up uh, much better describing what it is. Here I'm just, and then that, that one's coming across so you see how I've changed the way I use my hand. And I'm putting some green, some, some brighter greens, and mixing up the greens that I'm using there so that I get a few different greens and I'll be running them into the roof there and I'll go over them again and sharpen up the edges and I'm letting it catch against those shadowed areas. down here, it comes down here, meets this little path, and then it's coming down quite sharply from the path again. And then it's going around the whole hillside. It's still going down, but I'm making it go around like this because they've mowed it across that way and it's got a little mow pad in it. And you can see that the uh, raw sienna is showing through nicely to give it a little bit of colour. in amongst that bright green just by running over and here 
here, I'm just blending in those shadowed areas by using a dark green over it. And you can see this, this one is losing a lot of pastel um, against the, the, the very coarse sand of paper that we've got. This is a colour that's original, not their, um, what they're calling now, their smooth. This is the original one. And these, this paint down here has some quite dark lines with it. So I'm just putting in those bow lines again. like to wander around the paddock and they create little little wanderways around the paddocks there. So I'm putting a few of those in as well. I've lost all the cows I put in earlier, but that's okay, I remember where they were. Around the barn, where the workshed, where the, the cows sort of come down and congregate a bit, and people will, will move around. It just the grass gets a bit worn, and so it helps with that. So I've got a nice bit of um, shadow in there. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit, here, smooth it out little bit so that as you go up to the corner, I'm too distracted by the shadow. I want some of it to go up there, but not. Most of the shadowed area to concentrate down here. It helps to form the uh, contours of the, the hill there. So again, up there. A little few there. And putting a few more of those in here. In the mulling area. So the background greens are, are in. I need to put a few more darker ones in there. So I'm, I'm looking for the greens. I've put in a few in my box, but maybe not as much as I'd like. And now I'm just scrumbling them over the top of the other greens so that you get a grassy kind of look. It was getting a little bit smooth, so now I want to make it a little bit darker in the corners so that. What I'm doing is just pulling lightly over the top, just dragging them over the top. out a little bit there so I'm just doing a few horizontal strokes there Oops. and bringing those right up to the house and across. Now if I want to put some really bright um, green in there what I, I will do is use a, a yellower colour. So I am going to add some uh, brighter green high highlights there, especially in this moan area, so a few stripes of where they're blown in, and then a few little stripes down here next to the shadows, just a few going here, the shadows there, 
chests and controls. Maybe this is going to be Now I have to work on the cows. Um, and the barn. There's my next bits. Now I'm going to move back into this barn and get the references, the, the colours into that a little bit more. So I want to start with some quite light, and this is a, a sort of pale mauve colour, just to delineate that roof edge there again. Nice big swipe down there. Another big swipe down there. So now I've got the roof edge in. Some of that is going to go down here. Just a nice horizontal strokes for that. I will probably try and use my uh, this one on the edge to give it a nice bit of shadow there. It's very hard to see and put it place it properly, but shadows in now I just need to go back with the some very soft ones for them. Anyway, let's have another go. That's better, isn't it? I've managed that a little bit better. Yep, that's good. And in there, there's a lot of shadowy things, so I'm just putting in another shadow. I'm putting in some shadows down here. Coming across the wood. Down this is in shadow.
on to my work for And there'll be a nice pattern of shadow under the stairs where I need to get that going first. So more uh, colours in the wood. In the use my, my pencil to put in some quite sharp marks there. they start to become like patterns now. Well, I'm going to the dark kind of strokes. I'm not worrying too much about how pretty they're going in because I'm going to just give it a little sharpness along the bottom when I'm finished. sort of colour group and a couple of little lighter spots and I'm using it as sort of a pinky colour now pinky colour, just to get a little bit of variation in there. And now you can see the barn starting to emerge here. I have some shadows and, and darker marks to do over here. And they're just going to come down the edge of the barn. And then a few doorways and so on. Then what I want to do is put in the wood.
shadow of the steel. The barn's coming on, so a nice rustic feel to it. I was going to get some glassine, but I haven't been able to find it because the suitcase is in a bit of a mess, so I'm just going to get on with it and I'll be more careful. So, uh, what I want to do now, I'm still going on with the wood, so I'll pop in a little bit more wood, just choosing another colour, a little bit of a lighter colour this time, for some of the lighter. And I want to keep the brown not so they look like the face of wood, so more than rather than. these colours for the wood. So just use whatever you've got, a combination of the darks and the, the lights. I can use a little dark ones in the small shadowed areas there. Jabby jab technique, where I just jab away with the colours. to see what I'm doing. Now I want to put a darker side in the shadow side. Taking out a bit of the green. 
all that needs now is a few extra little shadow bits in there. So a little bit of shadow under there. back and forth, just putting some more rounds there so it's more like a little line. Cool but very dry. Right, I'm going to put in a couple of more highlights here and there. Some of these grasses areas.
very light hand with that, and I'm not using a light enough hand. So I'll go back in and just scrabble it over there again. Some of them still Balancing up the lights in the dark to give the suggestion of a cow. That's not the suggestion of a cow, that's the suggestion of some sort of monster for that display. So take some of the really dark in the shadows and
land on it. So just as with any other subject, keep going back and looking at it and seeing what it is that you've actually got wrong. There, I think I've just got the angle too much. Because I haven't got any fine pastels, I'm, I'm going in and just making a mess of it. So just keep persevering. I'm going back in now. That one to mold it a little bit. Maybe what it needs now is a touch of the light on the the back of it there. That makes it slightly more believable. And maybe a little bit of shadow on the grass I think. First to admit that what I'm doing with this one is breaking it in half so I get a slightly harder edge to sun. see what we think. There's, I think there's a sports game going over there. There's the little the work shed which I th I'm quite happy with. Uh, and the cows actually from here do look like cows. So happy with the illusion of the cows. And so that's my just my homage to the beautiful rustic wooden work chalets uh, in the cow meadows of Switzerland just reimagined from a couple of different photos that I had. So that's, that, that's it for the first uh, pastel lesson for this month. It's a really frantically busy month for me this month and I'm hoping to get you two full lessons in uh, for acrylic and uh, for pastels and, and maybe just one for acrylic this month but then next month I hope things uh, improve a bit. I've got a lot of, a lot of uh, custom paintings to get through for Christmas orders and I've got a big market to organise but I will be paying attention to you <laughs> and I will be getting you some more videos. I hope you found something useful in this one and uh, that you can just change the elements as much as you like, reimagine how uh, the reference is to create a painting that speaks of the message that you wanted to get across. For me with this one, it was just a remembrance of those lovely Swiss, so green, <laughs> with the cows and the cows. If I could attach something to this painting, it would be a little soundtrack of the cowbells. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye for now.